Hello friends and welcome back to another video from Homemaker. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today. Today we are going to talk about the plant that you are seeing right in front of you. A monster plant known as Monstera Deliciosa. This plant is also known as Swiss cheese plant or fruit salad plant. It is, um, this plant is native to Central American rainforest from the southern Mexico to Panama. It is a tropical wine from a racy family. Yeah, it's a wine. That means it climbs, loves to climb onto the trees and um, needs support as it grows big. Um, the name Swiss cheese plant, uh, we call it Swiss cheese plant because of these large iconic ribbon splits or the holes that you can see in the leaves. Now people say um, that the holes are because uh, of uh, the habitat where they live, where they grow actually. Because they grow in the tropics of rainforest and their heavy rains and heavy winds, to withstand all those heavy winds and rains, the leaves of this plant tend to get these beautiful slits and holes which makes which actually adds to the beauty of this plant. In wild, this plant grows actually quite ginormous. But when you grow them as an indoor plant, they come in very different um, sizes from small to large, depending upon what size you want according to the space that you have in your home. Monstera deliciosa is an epiphyte and as I told you it grows by climbing onto the trees or some sort of structure. Therefore when these plants grow indoor they require support of some form um, and when they grow big you might end up um, putting, a putting them um, on the support of some moss pole or um, totem or any sort of support that you've got in, in your home. Look how giant it is. When I bought this plant, it was not this big. It was quite small with, I can say, three or four leaves on it. And after that, I have, I can say, I have just repotted it once. And now this massive, it has grown. And this is a very new leaf that has come up. And you can make it out with the difference in the color of these two leaves. This is a very new leaf that is coming up and there's one more leaf that is coming up here. This one. So when I bought this plant, it was in shape. It didn't need any support. It was standing straight. But now it does need, as you can see, it's, it's going everywhere, everywhere around the space. And what I have done here is um, I have tied it with the basket. Just using a jute rope, I have tied my Monstera with the basket and when um, I will repot this plant, I will definitely add a totem um, to this so that it can get its support. Now we will talk about the care of this plant, how to take care of this plant. So we'll start with the lighting conditions. To mimic the tropical environment they are used to, place your Monstera plant in a filtered indirect sunlight. So indirect sunlight means filtered light. Um, you can place them in a south or um, a west facing window where receives uh, where um, you the plant might get a lot of bright indirect sunlight. If you place this plant in um, direct sunlight the leaves of this plant will start changing color from green to yellow and also they'll get burnt um, or scorched so um, don't expose this plant to direct sunlight just keep them away um, and just provide them the filtered light in the house the ideal um, temperature it requires is around 70 to 80 degree Fahrenheit uh, Monsteras they love humidity so you might need to use a more, uh, humidifier or you might need to mist the leaves of um, this plant from time to time to provide that extra humidity. But I think misting the leaves um, might um, affect the shine and the, and the beauty of these leaves. They might get some uh, fungus or infection or some spots on it. So maybe humidifier is the best option because it will provide equal humidity to every um, part 
of the leaf every ev and every leaf so humidifier is the best option um, also you can um, you have to make sure that when you are placing your plant um, in the light rotate your plant regularly so every side of the plant gets e even sunlight like here you can see um, now my this plant is usually um, sits this way in front of the window so th um, that's why all the leaves are facing towards this side whereas on the other side not many leaves are facing so if you keep on rotating your plant every area of the plant will receive equal amount of light um, and the leaves will be equally um, distributed uh, around through your pot and or not all the leaves falling on one side so just make sure to keep rotating your pot um, now we'll talk about the soil conditions uh, monsteras they prefer a soil that is peaty and well draining since soggy soil can cause root rot you all know that Therefore, a combination of 60% um, of peat moss or coco coir, 30% of compost and worm castings and 10% of perlite will be the right soil mix for these monsteras. And I have put the same soil mix for my monstera. All right, now we'll talk about the watering conditions. So monsteras, they require moderate level of watering. They don't need too much of watering. Um, the best strategy is to assess assess the soil before you water them. Stick your finger in the soil to check the dryness level. If you feel that the soil is still moist and the soil is sticking to your finger, you can leave your plant for maybe a couple of more days and reassess after 3-4 days uh, and then water your plant. Water it only if the soil is dry to the depth of 1-2 to two inches. Otherwise, don't water it because you don't want the, your uh, plants and the roots um, to sit in the soggy soil. When we are talking about watering, we'll also talk about the fertilizing. So fertilize your monstera once a month during the growing period, which is the spring and the summer. Um, and you can use a balanced liquid fertilizer to fertilize your plant. Um, a seaweed solution will also do the job. So um, feed them only during the growing season. There is no need to feed the monstera during the fall or the winter season um, because if you fertilize them during those seasons, they're not actually growing and they'll just overwhelm the soil, overwhelm the um, plant. So no need to fertilize during that time. Now we'll talk about the repotting. So because the monsteras tend to grow to be large plants, as the name suggests monstera so they uh, definitely grow into um, large very large plants um, and the, these leaves tend to become even more larger and even more bigger so um, you might need to repot them uh, when the roots outgrow the pot and because these plants they grow very quickly believe me they grow very quickly and maybe in a two months or three months sometimes you end up um, repotting them and putting them into a bigger um, pot I took this monstera maybe I can say three months back and it was it was just this small just this this much height not very big and now just look at it it's massive it has grown this big with such a broad leaves and um, it has grown double its size now and when I bought it after just I can say for three to four weeks I repotted it because I could see the roots coming out from the from the base of the pot and now I think I might need to repot it again because I could see one of the root popping out from the drainage holes so um, these monsteras they need regular repotting just keep an eye on the drainage holes if you see the roots coming out um, you have to repot your plant and these plants this give out the roots um, from their new stalks as well I'll show you one of the root um, this one here if you can see this one here this is the root which is coming out from there from this part the new stalk that grew 
from here this root is coming out and when this plant will grow bigger this root will also become very big so what happens is the more monstera stalks you have you will see more roots coming out from everywhere because it's an epiphyte it's a growing plant so every new stalk will give out a node and the node will give out its own root let me find some more roots for you here was one of the root sticking that I have put inside the soil if you can see here there was one root um, just give me a minute here you can see one more root over here there is one more root here and there is one more root behind there behind that if you can see there so so friends when this plant will keep on growing it the roots will keep on becoming large like this one and then what you might need to do is either what you can do is either you can stick when this root grows bigger you can fold it and stick it back into the soil or what you can do is just snip off this root from here so if you snip off the root the root will not grow and the plant will also not grow that bigger so you will be able to maintain the size and the growth of your plant but if you want some people like those roots to grow and come out of the plant so if you want uh, those roots to come out let them come out and you might need to pop them separately somewhere in a different pot or um, they will just fall over from the pot from everywhere but these plants do tend to get um, these larger roots from everywhere from every stalk every stalk will give out one root so wherever the new new uh, stalk will come out you'll see a root growing from there but it basically helps in repotting because what you can actually do is if your plant is too bigger you can snip it off from here from here taking the root in snip it off from here and then this whole stalk you can put it in the water for propagation so it's very easy to maintain that um, hugeness to maintain that structure of your plant you can just uh, keep on taking snipping out those um, extra stalks um, out of your plant and stick them into the water you'll get your one more new monstera um, plant um, and also you will be able to maintain the shape of the mother plant so um, this was about pruning and repotting now we'll talk about the pest infestation so um, these plants are very 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 prone to get mealybugs thrips aphids um, etc so you might um, uh, you might use any insecticide or soap water solution neem oil solution uh, will also help in getting rid of those um, nasty pests so now we'll talk about the common problems that you can see with your monstera the first common problem is yellowing of the leaves so yellowing of the leaves are a sign of overwatering. so you might need to cut back on the watering if you see the leaves losing its green color next is browning of the tips I don't have any example to show you because my monstera looks quite healthy green and beautiful so the browning of this of the tips usually happen when the air is too dry and the humidity is low so you might need to miss your plant to ma and maintain the room temperature or you might need to invest in a humidifier to provide that level of humidity um, to your monstera and making sure that the leaves don't turn brown and yellow um, next is no holes or no slits okay so here you can see some of my leaves they don't have any holes in them these two leaves and the younger leaves so those are very small leaves um, and usually the smaller leaves they don't uh, tend to get any holes but as the leaves grow larger the mature um, the, the more mature the plant gets um, the holes and uh, slits will become more prominent so this happens but also if your plant is completely not having any holes 
or any slits at all even though your plant is bigger that means your plant um, is not getting enough of light it's not getting enough of water or it's not getting enough of nutrients so you might need to check on those requirement levels and make sure your plant um, is having all those um, appropriate um, amount of light and water and nutrients and humidity so that your plant is healthy your plant is having holes in it and it looks amazing look how beautiful it is I love the beauty of this plant with all the slits and holes in it isn't it beautiful and I love this beautiful new baby green leaf that has come up it's so soft to touch and it's so cute and it has got one hole in there I love this plant now regarding the toxicity to the pets this plant the sap of this plant is really toxic so you might need to keep this plant away from the reach of your pets and children if they have a habit of nibbling on to the leaves and all this stuff so yes it is a little bit toxic to the pets and for the children it can cause irritation um, and swelling of the mouth lips and throat so just be careful um, <clears throat> If you have young children and pets at home regarding the propagation um, so it's very easy to propagate this plant I will make a separate video on propagation um, what you do uh, is the same that I showed you when I was talking about the repotting so every stalk will give out its root as I told you before and I showed you a couple of roots coming out from from here you can see there is one tiny little root over there and this is another so when this uh, plant grew this much bigger and when this plant gave out this new stalk it gave out this root as well and then another one it gave out this new stalk and it has it has got a node over here which you can't see but I can feel it here you can see this protuberant, uh, this swelling and um, this node coming out here is one root and then it gave out this new very new leaf and the stalk this one and I can feel the node over here the root has not come out but I can feel that node over there so with a new stalk coming up you, you uh, there will be a new root as well so it's very easy let's say if you want to propagate you just make a slit from here and um, just give me a minute yeah so you just make a slit from here and pop this part from here into the water and in all my videos as I say that I prefer going with the water propagation than the soil propagation because with water propagation you can see the roots growing and developing and when you need to uh, put it in the soil um, so I would suggest you to go with the proper water propagation only uh, so what you do is you take the cutting from here put it in a cup of water glass of water whatever and then you will see the roots developing once the roots have developed you put it in the soil mix and the soil mix you can take the same that I mentioned before when I, we were talking about the soil conditions and the type of soil this plant needs the PT soil so and that's how you propagate and you will see more new growth coming out from um, your new uh, monstera plant and you will get two out of your one plant and also you'll be able to maintain the shape if your plant is overgrowing and it's growing everywhere um, in your house and these plants generally tend to take a lot of space because they, these um, stems they grow very long they grow um, very tall and these leaves tend to grow even more larger when as the plant matures and the more bigger you increase the size of the pot the plant also tends to grow more bigger so um, this was all about propagation I'll make a 
separate video on propagation when I'll do the propagation and then uh, I'll show you clearly how to do it. But for now, this was all about um, the care of this plant, um, propagation of this plant and um, how to look after this plant. And also I might show you how to add a totem, a more stick to provide support to your plant. So guys, this was all about Monstera Deliciosa, a very, very beautiful plant, one of my favorite. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you next time with another exciting video. Till then, stay safe, keep gardening and bye-bye.